Hey everybody, Jim the Tabletop Engineer here and welcome to a new episode. There are a lot of questions I get regarding a lot of my projects, but two of the questions that seem to pop up the most are, where do I get my inspiration from and how do I get started or where do you get started? And so I figured in this video I was going to try and tackle two of those questions because this particular project addresses both of those very well. Now the first thing you need to know about me is I can't draw a stick figure that looks right. I, I don't have the ability to draw. And I know people say, oh, anyone can learn to draw. I've tried. And um, I can vi close my eyes and visualize this barbarian in my mind. But if I take a pencil or pen and try to put it on paper, it just doesn't, the, the connection is not there. So I'm envious of people who can envision something and then sketch it or draw it. What I typically do for inspiration is I go to things like video games, I go to um, fantasy art books and things like that, and I look for things that I could create, not necessarily exactly, but you know, get a, get a head start on. So a lot of my projects are based off of images and screen captures and things like that from video games or books. Uh, you know, I go to Google Images all the time and just spend a, you know, a few minutes or 30 minutes looking at images of whatever I'm doing. So if I want to build like a goblin watchtower, I go and I Google goblin watchtower and I, I look at what artists are in visual or visualizing for goblin watchtowers and I take those images and I try to come up with my own idea. Now sometimes I'll take an image and I'll try to duplicate it as close to the original as possible. And sometimes I just use it is a guide. I don't try to, to, to hit it dead on. So um, for inspiration, that's where I get a lot of my ideas. But once I've got the image or the idea of what I want to make, how do I know where to get started or where do I get started? And for that, I go back to some of my engineering training, uh, especially like drafting or um, a lot of the hands-on projects that we were forced to make. There's, there's, uh, there's no hard and fast rules here, but one of the things I always try to do, and, and I don't remember where I picked this up, I just picked it up, was look at the project and break it down to its, its key components. Don't look at the paint job, don't look at the little nitty gritty details, what we call the greebles or the greeblies. Look at the basic shape of it, and then identify the biggest part and start there. Now, there's a couple reasons for that. One, the biggest part is probably going to take you the longest. So do it first. Get it out of the way. The second one is it's psychological. Once you've got the biggest part of the project done, you can sort of think of that as you're, you know, you're up the hill and you're at the, the peak, right? Now everything's just downhill from there, which isn't always true, especially if there are multiple large pieces of a project. But if you can identify the largest part of a project... Try to start there, and then when it's done, you'll look at it and go, "Wow, you know, I'm, I'm committed, right? Let's finish this thing." Um, and and again, the the largest part typically takes the most time and energy to make. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to throw an image up on the screen. This is some sort of science fiction uh, missile launcher, or maybe a laser. I, I don't know what this is, but I love the image of it. But a beginner or even someone who's really you know confident in their crafting abilities to look at that and say I'm gonna make that there's a lot going on here right there's a lot of details the paint job angles right angles odd angles how, how do you get started with this I found this image online and uh, along with the painted or the developed image. This is a digital file. But I found this image and alongside this image was a very basic example of that object stripped down. It's all the paint jobs gone, all the greeblies are gone, just the bare bones shape of it. Obviously this looks like it was designed in like a CAD application, computer-aided design. And whoever designed it has stripped it down to its bare bones. And so I'm going to show you that image right now look at this bare bones image and ask yourself if I was just given that take away all the paint and the greeblies and the detail work or whatever could I recreate that now maybe your answer is no 
But if your answer is no, let's tackle this project one piece at a time. Look at that picture again and ask yourself, what's the biggest part of it? Now you might think it's the launcher part, which is sort of a box uh, with angled sides or whatever, and you could start there. That's a good place to start. But for me, the base, the, the, the bottom of it, where, what it's resting on or sitting on, that's the biggest part. Once I get the base going, I could sort of mentally say, okay, I'm building this from the ground up, right? But you start where you want to start. But let's get to the work table, and I'm going to walk you through my creation of this particular image. And in this video, I'm just going to create the basic shape of that second image you saw. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to add all the details and the paint job and all that stuff yet. That will come in the next video. This video is just to show you how to take something that you find on the internet, identify its biggest components or the major pieces that give it the shape or look that you're looking for, and tackle those first. So when this video ends, you're going to see my version of this missile launcher without the paint and the details, and hopefully, maybe, you can follow along, and I'll, I'll, I'll post a link to the images in the description below. So let's get to the work table, let's get started, and let me show you how I made this missile launcher. I began this project with just a piece of chipboard. I cut it uh, at a six inch by six inch square. This is going to be the base of the missile launcher. Starting with that six inch by six, six inch square, I just looked, I referred off and on back to the original image and I made marks where I felt I could make the bevel cuts and the weird and odd angles of that base. If you don't feel comfortable doing this, just do a six by six inch square and let that be your base and you can add detail work to it later. But as you can see here with all these lines and things, I was giving myself uh, something to, to basically trim down with you know an eye-catching uh, shape. After I cut that, uh, after I finished cutting that piece up, I taped it down to a piece of quarter inch foam and then I traced a, a line around it about one eighth of an inch, maybe almost a quarter of an inch, hard to say. Uh, and this is so that I can later on bevel the edge. Then I glued down the piece of chipboard to the foam, centered it as best I could, and then I weighed it down with some weights. While the glue was drying, I made the next uh, layer up, which I did it in a similar manner. It's a four, by, four inch by four inch square, slightly different shape. Once I cut that shape out using the lines and things like that, I traced an edge around a piece of quarter inch foam, just like I did the larger piece. And then I cut it out. Then I glued down the chipboard to the uh, foam piece. Next, I made the pedestal, and this is basically two squares. The top one is about one and three quarters inch square, and the bottom one will be two inch by two inch. These two squares will be mounted uh, with about a two inch gap between them, and what this will do is when I add sides, these sides will sort of flare out or be beveled out to, uh, so that it just doesn't look like a rectangle. It has, a, it has sort of a, um, a cut angled sides uh, to it. So I cut those squares out and uh, again, I used a two inch gap. Now to center these, you want these to be you know perfectly centered. I drew a, a, a plus on each one by finding the center point. And then I created this little base. It, from, the, from the bottom, it looks like a plus symbol. And I glued this onto the smaller piece uh, using the lines that I used to find the center point. And then with that plus symbol, I put hot glue on it and then I lined it up 
on the crosshairs on the larger two by two inch square piece. And basically what this did was it just allowed me to center the two pieces so that the base will look symmetrical from all sides. Each month, Bexham's Bazaar RPG and Wargaming Magazine provides gamers with articles, props to print and cut out for players, mini adventures, new monsters, and much more. Look in the description below for details on how to get a few free issues so you can see what you're missing. The next was, uh, it's not so much tricky, it's just a little, you have to do a lot of cutting and testing. I glued the four sides, uh, the wider sides, these are one and a quarter inch. Don't cut them to any particular length. Glue it on flush and then trim the bottom edge. And you're going to do this four times for all four sides. This is going to leave a thin angled gap in between each of the one and a quarter inch sides. And you're going to have to custom cut pieces both to width and length to fit in there. Just trial and error, trial and error. But once you've got them done, hot glue them in and then use a little hot glue in the seam you'll see in just a second I'm going to glue one in here and then I run a bead down the edge and I let it cool for about three seconds so it doesn't burn my finger and then I take my finger three two one and then I smear that glue and it just sort of smooths over the edge next I fired up my Proxon and I took those uh, chipboard pieces that were glued onto the foam and I set an angled edge with my Proxon and I ran these along the chipboard and what it does it creates a beveled edge you just let the chipboard guide the wire once the bevels were cut I just glued on the uh, the top base to the bottom base and then add some weight to it so that it really the glue really adheres then I glued this pedestal onto the top just center it as best you can I centered it using my eyeballs nothing no nothing magical and I glued a little cap a plastic cap on top next I took a four inch wide piece of chipboard and I measured out uh, lines at a certain pattern. It freeze frame and you'll be able to see the measurements I did. What I'm doing here is I'm basically creating the launcher part at the top and I'm not going to cut through these lines. I'm going to score on these lines so that I can fold this up and it creates like a three-dimensional structure, like a box. So here I am folding it up and then what I did was I didn't glue it on the long edge. I glued it on the um, on one end and I only used two sides and I did this so that I could square it up and make sure that it was as square as it could be. And once it was once I was happy, I eyeballed it and traced a line around the remainder so that I would know where to put the hot glue so that I could seal it up. Then I just sealed up the edge and ran a bead down, used my finger to smooth it and trimmed away flush that end. Now leave the other end hollow for now and what you're going to do is trace around it and it's going to give you a piece that's too large to fit down in it. So you're going to have to trim this a little at a, a little bit at a time. You want it to sink down in there but don't let it fall down in there or you may never get it out. Once I was happy with how it, how it uh, fit down in there, I cut a piece of foam and uh, marked some lines on the side so I know where to glue it. And I hot glued that piece of foam in. It's about a little, almost a half an inch in, not quite. And then I put hot glue on it and glued that uh, cutout over the top so it's sort of inset. Now, before I glue the uh, launcher on, I need to make this little ramp. And this was just sort of, I mean, it wasn't anything fancy. It was just an angled piece that I could glue on top of that white round cap and allow the launcher to sort of sit at an angle. So glue the launcher on once the uh, glue is dried. Next I found in my junk drawer these three little round uh, pieces. These come from an older Rector set my kids played with. 
I, uh, I eyeballed it, glue them on, and then I cut some side anchors. I, I don't know what else to call these, but they'll go on the left and right side of the pedestal. I glued them on. Here's one being glued on, and the other one will be glued on the other side. And they have an unusual beveled look to them. Next, I went back to my Proxon, and I cut these two rectangular boxes that will be mounted on the rear sides, sides more towards the rear of the launcher. And they're beveled on, on two edges. You can see me hot gluing them on here. Notice they go towards the back and in the middle, right there. And that's just following the original image. All right, once again, trace the front, cut this out. And this is just going to cover the, uh, the front and um, give it a three-dimensional look with those white spacer or white uh, pieces of plastic that are glued in. Cut out, the, cut out a center portion of it and then just glue it over the front. Then back to the Proxon and I'm going to start cutting more of the little detail pieces. When I say little, these are actually large detail pieces compared to some of the little fiddly bits. Now these little pieces, you make a sandwich. There's one short one that goes between two long ones. These go in the four corners of the base. And I'm using a 321 square just to square up the rear of it so that they look, uh, they look good. The front of the launcher had these two angled pieces, so I glued those on. And those angled pieces ran underneath the launcher, so I just cut little strips of foam to follow it back uh, to, the, to the pedestal. And then by this time, the glue had dried on the little four corner pieces, and I just glued those four pieces into place right here. I hope you liked that. Um, it's a little lengthier video than I, I wanted to do, but I tried not to skip any things that would help you if you wanted to duplicate this particular project. Here's what I have so far. This is my missile launcher, and um, you know it's got all the, the, the bigger pieces on it, right? But it's got none of the paint work. It's got none of the detail work. It's waiting for that. That's actually, in my opinion, somewhat difficult. <laughs> uh, painting is tricky. Uh, getting the details to look realistic, that can be tricky. This used to be hard for me. This is not hard anymore. And I'm not saying that to try to make you feel, if, if you're a beginner, I don't want you to feel overwhelmed. I want you to, I want you to understand, I used to be where you are, and this would have, over, this would have scared me initially. But now that I look at how I made it and, and the concepts that I did to do it, um, I could go back and tell myself, look, you can do this. It's, it's the basic shapes, the biggest items, get them made, and you'll end up with this basic shape, and then you can tackle the painting and the detail work. So I hope this has given you not only inspiration, but I hope this has answered some questions because again, where do I get my motivation or my inspiration from and where do I get started? Those are the, those are the most often asked questions that I get regarding a lot of my projects. So now, now you know. Um, if you are artistic and you can envision things in your mind, you're way far, you're, you're much better off than I am because I have to go and find ideas um, and, and riff off of them. And, uh, you know, this is not something that I could have just popped in my head un, unformed. Um, this came from an image. So I'm trying to follow it as close as possible, but I will make some deviations with the paint and the detail work. Um, the other thing I wanted to avoid on this was doing any 3D printed parts because not everybody has a 3D printer. There are a lot of things on here I could have designed very quickly in a CAD application like these little pieces and these pieces and maybe these and printed them out very quickly like 20-30 minutes you know for a whole bunch of these and and those would have just been glued in place but I wanted to show you how I how I made these in foam you know and and used my Proxon to 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 get these basic shapes done. So. All right, that's all I have in this video. In the next video, I'll tackle finishing it up with the paint and the detail work, and we can look at it and compare it to the original image and see how I did. I would like to remind you to please come join me over at the Tabletop Engineer Facebook page. Also, please come join us at the Tabletop Crafters Guild Facebook page. We are over 35,000 members growing daily. I mean, it's just growing, 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 and it's so fun. 
uh, to, to visit that page because it, people share the photos of their projects like I do and I can see what other people are creating. It gives me ideas. So it's, it's a great jumping uh, off place for ideas, but it's also a place to ask questions and get answers. So please consider come, coming and joining us there. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. I would really appreciate that. It takes just a second to click it. If you don't like it, click I didn't like it. That's fine too. But uh, another favor I would like to ask is if you like these videos and you would like to see more and more and more of them, please do consider becoming a patron of mine. Go to patreon.com slash the tabletop engineer and for just $1 a month, you will get access to early videos. I, I release my crafting videos usually a week or two weeks prior to anyone else seeing them before they go live on YouTube. I also do a lot of stuff there. I do live crafting sessions, live discussions. I do giveaways. Uh, I put up PDFs occasionally, things like that. It's just uh, it's my way of paying back um, the people who support me because this is now my full-time job and I'm enjoying it. Uh, it. I'm not where I need to be just yet, but I'm getting there. And I appreciate all of you who are supporting me on Patreon and I would love to have the rest of you come and become patrons as well. All right, this is Jim, the Tabletop Engineer. I will see you in the next video. Take care.